I want to specially congratulate the presiding prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, who is the fort fortunate man to be in the leadership of his church, Chukwemeka Kanu Uche, JP. And the why? For good leadership of the people of God. We love you from the bottom of our hearts because we can see the aura of God's presence in your lives and your leadership. Uh, let me, before I come back to the Methodist Church and the link between the Methodists and the Baptists, I want to publicly again acknowledge the helpfulness or the prelates in my leadership of the church in Nigeria for a good six years. It wasn't an easy task, but I had him behind me as a solid rock, encouraging me to stand what is true and for what is right. Even to the detriment of himself, it was so fierce, the attack was shifted from me and the attack was shifted to him. But he said, we are going to do what is right and I'm going to stand not by politics, not by sentiment, but by what is right. I want to publicly acknowledge your, your courage and the godliness in you. May you continue to be relevant in the vineyard of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Uh, why I acknowledge the presence of all other heads of churches that are here both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria because I wouldn't want to commit error. I wouldn't mention you one by one. Let me also acknowledge the, pres the presence of the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here, ably represented by the chaplain to the Aso Rock Villa, Pastor Steyi Maloma. You are welcome. There have been a long standing relationship between the Methodist and the Baptist in Nigeria. And before Nigeria, the two churches came out of the Church of England, both the Methodists and the Baptists. Methodists started with the ministry of John Wesley when he was at Oxford University. He started the Holiness Brethren Bible Study. And God took it from there and took it beyond him. The Baptists got into trouble with the Church of England, because the fact that baptism was not pro done properly, it ought to be by immersion. And because there was dissension about that, they had to pull out those who read the scripture in the same way. They pulled out to form what is called the Baptist. But in Nigeria, in 1842, which was the year of spiritual liberation of our country, God sent these mission bodies, the Anglican, the Methodist, the Baptist, and of course, even the Catholic Church, to Nigeria to evangelize this nation. Baptist's first mission in 1842 didn't succeed. He came from England through Fernando Po to Calabar. But when they got there, the Presbyterian had been there before them that same year. And the monk of Calabar told Reverend Storch, who led the team, that he wouldn't want conflict between two mission bodies. So the Baptists would move interland to do their ministry. But instead of moving interland, they went back to England. And they didn't come back again until 1850. In 1850, Thomas Jefferson Bowen came 
to Nigeria. And what happened? He went straight to Abel Kuta. And there, Thomas Batch Freeman, the one who pioneered Methodist Church work in Nigeria, and Henry Tansen, the one that pioneered the work of the Anglican in Nigeria, were living together and they welcomed him into their house and he was there for nine months. I think you can jam your hands together for that. It was after he learned Yoruba for nine months that he moved out to do his ministry. However, our past did cross in 1888 at Fall Baptist Church, Broad Street, Lagos, there was a schism in the church. There was a top-down approach in the administration of the church by the white people. And the locals felt that they were looked down upon, especially the pastors that were indigenous. Their welfare was not taken care of, and they didn't open up for discussion to better the lot of these indigenous pastors. So there was schism, and the locals moved out of Paul Baptist Church 24A Broad Street to go and form another church that is called Ebenezer Baptist Church. Breadfruit down there, just 100 meters down. And Paul Baptist Church became almost empty. The whites from America who, who sent Reverend David, who was there then, invited him back home. They said, you have spoiled our ministry in Nigeria. And during the interregnum, the Baptists beckoned to the Methodists to come and be preaching at Fort Baptist Church, 24 A Broad Street, Lagos. That's another uh, fellowship of the Baptists and the Methodists to the glory of God. So don't crucify prelate Uche that he has brought me to here today. So come and preach here. It has been a long-standing tradition to the glory of God. I remember there was one of my father's heir also, the prelate emeritus of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, prelate Ola Makinde. He has been a good father and a good support for those of us who came to leadership after them. I saw him. You are welcome to this service. And thank you for your moral and spiritual support for the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church of Nigeria. So I will go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal Father, the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to those who are simple to hear. Therefore, Father, I pray that you will prepare our hearts this morning to receive the engrafted milk of the Spirit and be able to derive profit from your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That is what we are considering today. And I want to read from the book of Revelation. Chapter 22. I will read the first 17 verses quickly. I will watch on my message so that I don't delay you in this service. Revelation 22, 1 to 7. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of his street, and on either side of the river were the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face. And his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun. 
For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not see the words of this prophecy, of this book. For the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust. Who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to tree to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. And whoever loves and, and practices a lie, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bride and the morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hear say, come. And let him who has come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. Thanks be unto God. When Jesus Christ has finished his work of redemption on the cross of Calvary, and after his resurrection, he showed himself mainly to his disciples alone for 40 days before physically ascending to heaven on Mount Olivet in their presence. While they were gazing into heaven, two angels appeared unto them, telling them that as Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, in like manner, he will come back again. His second coming is not going to be for fun. Neither is it going to be for jamboree. He is coming to reward and to judge. He will take those who believe in him to his own presence, where there is going to be eternal tranquility, peace and serenity, joy and eternal life. Why those who love sin and refuse to follow him because of the stubbornness of their hearts, we go into hell. May hell never be the portion of anyone here hearing my words in Jesus' name. We saw that in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Apart from this, Revelation 22, 7 and 12, where Jesus says, I am coming quickly. There are sundry other passages of the Bible where he himself and the prophet spoke about his second coming. The second coming of Jesus is not an illusion. The second coming of Jesus is reality. And whoever is wise 
will listen and believe. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He went away and promised that he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. It's a reality. No matter the argument anybody may put up against is coming back, he doesn't just change what he is going to do. It doesn't require your opinion. It doesn't require man. He is coming back again is his own program. The program of the Almighty God to reward the saints and to to judge the sinners. In, in the book of John chapter 14, from verse one to three, Jesus told his disciples, because he started revealing to them that he must be crucified and he must be under the ground for three days and he will rise again. The disciples are very sad because they wouldn't want to lose him. They wouldn't contemplate his death at all. Then Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if you go, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Then a Jesus speaking directly to his follower. I receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The anniversary message is therefore expected to start us to a remembrance that whatever we do while we are here on earth has rewards either positive or negative, or that we are the architects of our own destiny by the way we live daily. Therefore, don't wonder. In that passage, the Bible says, who is filthy, let him continue to be filthy. Whoever is holy, let him continue to live the life of holiness. You are going to reap what you sow. You are going to be the architect. I am going to be the architect of my destiny in eternity. Whether in hell or in eternity with Christ. So, whatsoever we do while we are living, please continue. 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 I am the owner of my body. I will use it as I like. Continue. I am the owner of my eyes. I will use, look at anything I will continue. I am the owner of my house. I will practice whatever I like. Continue. Even if you are a kidnapper, continue. I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me. To a person, to everyone. According to what he has done. So on that day, Beloved, I will have nobody to blame but myself. I pray by the way I live and the way you live, we will not become the enemies of ourselves in the name of Jesus. This message is prepared in order to remind us that we don't have a continuing city here. If it's coming here, to take us away, it means that we should not think too much about here, but about that. We need to daily prepare more for our beloved heavenly home. Number three, this message is to how man eat in our hearing that Jesus 
is going to come suddenly where nobody is expecting him. He may come at the hour of just preaching. The time and the hour, no one knows. And no one should take his coming for granted. It's going to be sudden. Therefore, we must be prepared always, being watchful, so that when he appears, we may catch up with him. Number four, this message is prepared to remind us that the day and the time and the hour is not ours about his coming. We are not, to, science cannot determine it. Don't be carried away also by false prophets who are so definite about the time of his coming. Even the angels of God that behold the face of God in heaven, they don't know. The father has reserved that to his own check. chest. Number five. This message is prepared to remind us that delay in the second coming of Jesus Christ is not tantamount to failure to come. The delay is to reveal how merciful God is. He's been merciful to us all. Maybe one more sinner will repent and will not go to hell. Or one believer who has become a backslider will come back home. He doesn't want anybody to perish. So he has delayed in coming. But delay is not denial. He will definitely come. What is the nature of the second coming? There are, the scholars differ in the way Jesus will come. But by my meticulous reading of the word of God, I have seen two stages of the second coming. The first coming is what is called today the rapture. Though the word rapture is not in the Bible, but what rapture means in our dictionary reflects the stage of the first, first coming, which we see in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. You read it from verse 15 to 17. That is when Jesus will appear suddenly in the sky with the arc, voice of archangel, with a blast. And immediately, there is the appearance of the Son of Man. All the saints, both dead and living, we go and meet with him in the air. It doesn't appear that in that verse coming, his feet will be on the, his soul will be on the feet on, on the ground. But he will appear in the sky, and the saints will catch up with him in the sky, and he will take them away. Then the time of tribulation will begin. When the Lord will release Satan to really ferment the lives of people on earth. It was after the second coming, I mean the first appearance, the, 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 the rapture, that some unbelievers now will believe and turn to Jesus, but it will be like passing through fire because it will not be bearable. Satan will have taken over. Many of them will be killed just anyhow. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, 4 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 17, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, we by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You hear it? To meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. 
This is, as I said, is referred to at the first stage, the rapture. But after about 1,000 years, the Lord will come back again. And that is the stage B of his second coming. In Matthew 24, in the book of Matthew 24, from verse 29 to 31, the Bible says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then uh, all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And uh, we see the Son of Man coming in the, on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. At this second coming, let me remind us, Jesus has no time to preach the gospel again to anybody. It is not going to be a time of mercy. It's not going to be a time of repentance anymore. It's going to be a terrible day for many people. Especially people who have become God to themselves, who have refused to submit to God. Then science will fail. Everything about human knowledge will fail. And human beings will come face to face with the judgment of the creator, the Lord God of life. I pray for you and I will not be a terrible day. I think I will hear a better amen to that point. The second coming, as I said before, is going to be sudden. What are the implication of this? The implication is that you and I should get prepared every moment. The parable of the 10 passages in the book of Matthew 25, 1 to 30, underscore the fact that his second coming will be sudden. So we'll be doing wedding and the Lord will come. I pray that he will meet me where I'm preaching. I, I pray for that. I pray for that. I, when he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will start. I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord. I'll be somewhere walking. I will be somewhere walking. I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord. I'll be somewhere walking. I'll be somewhere walking. I'll be somewhere. Walking for. Please don't let us be like the foolish virgins. They were careless. They were unprepared. And the time came like a prank on a woman. As labor falls on the woman suddenly. The second coming of the law will be to many people. Then you can ask, why is he coming? I've told you, he is coming to reward his servants. All the discipline you have exercised, the self-control, the godliness for which people have been mocking you, nothing is in vain. He wants to reward you and I publicly. And by God's grace, we are not going to miss that reward. Why is he coming back again? He is coming back again because he is going to judge the world. He will judge Satan. Already Satan is judged. But all those who follow the beatings of Satan will be severely judged. And there wouldn't be opportunity 
for anybody to beg him for anything. Remember that passage we read, which the prelate told me to preach on, Revelation 22, 12, says again, and behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Now, let me ask you, what is your work? What are you doing? Is what you are doing quietly, privately, the same as what you are doing publicly? Let me give an illustration. There was a meeting we were holding. This is life story. This is not a fable. We were holding a meeting of the Association of Baptist Churches in the city of Ibadan. And one of the elderly pastors asked the rest of us at the pastor's uh, forum, say, please, so I need your advice. I need your counsel. He thought that all of us will come to you because you are more elderly. He said, yeah, there is a problem I face in my church. What is your problem? The, the, the head of the decades in my church came to me and asked me a question. He asked, our father in the Lord, will I be able to enter heaven? And he looked at them and said, will you be able to enter heaven? Why are you a decade? Why are you a Christian in the first place? It's for you to enter heaven. Anyone that believes in Jesus will enter heaven. And he said, my pastor, will I enter heaven? The pastor said, I don't know what you mean. Please tell me what you mean. Then he said, it is about my mother. Say, what happened to your mother? Say, okay. My younger brother, I mean, my younger sister, was doing a degree program by sandwich. And during the long, long day, will bring our daughter to my mother to help take care of the, that grandchild until she returns from the sandwich program. I think you understand what I'm saying. Now, during that period, there were other children with the grandma, and grandma taught them how to eat the photos in the woman. The photos in the woman, the conception, the embryo, that was what the grandma was giving them to eat. This is a life story. Some of you just wear good looks and good dresses, but when anybody knows who you are, that person should not stay near you again forever. Now, during that period, they wanted to change the environment for the girl, and they said, go to your uncle. Who was the deacon? When she got to the deacons, they, they prepare rice. And you know children, they love rice. They prepare rice for them, but this girl refused not to eat rice. What are you going to eat? She said it in Yoruba, Ole. And the man thought that he was talking about beans cake, which we call ole in Yoruba. I said, no, they don't call it ole, it's ole. The, the young, the small girl said, no, uncle, it's not ole, it's ole. Are, are you mad? They don't eat ole. Ole is in the womb of a pregnant woman. He said, yeah, that, that, that was what the grandma used to give to us. We eat that at breakfast every morning. Ah! This, the brain of this girl turned, bro. So he just took the girl straight to the grandma. I said, Grandma, hear what this girl is doing. Is, is she mad? She refused to eat uh, rice. And uh, the mom said, well, what, what did she want to eat? The, 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 the man said, 
he said he wanted to eat only the fortress in the woman. Ah! And grandma said, eh, have you never heard of things like that before? And the eyes of the deacon turned red. Say, so do you give them only to eat? I said, is that your business? Ah. So the deacon said, okay, this, man, this woman will not live again. It's enough. Out of holy anger, he went to the market. He bought charcoal, he bought matches, bought kerosene, bought alligator pepper, bought onion, took everything in anger. He entered the room of mama and said, you wicked woman, ah! I'm ashamed to be associated with you. You have destroyed many, the, 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 the dream of many people. You are a wicked soul. You give photos to young children to eat. I'm ashamed. I'm a dickhead of a child. No, you will not continue. And the man put kerosene on the charcoal, put alligator pepper, put onion, put, put pepper itself, dry pepper, everything dry. Put it on fire. And went to the room of this woman and said, this is the last hour you will live on her. And put fire on that thing, shut the door against the mother, and the woman coughed and coughed and died. So after she had gone, now the deacon went to the pastor, will I enter heaven? So I am asking you, will he enter heaven? Please answer me. I know. The, bad, the method is you, you have better method than any other church. But the question to ask is that did that woman ever remember that Jesus is coming back again? What will he meet with you? And you don't need to be an old woman before you are wicked. I once had a driver. I will not give you story. I had a driver. I will not mention his name. He's bearing the name of one of the important disciples of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And this driver was given to me by one member of the church who pleaded and pleaded that I should let him work with me. However, then I discovered that the car I was using, since it took over, by the time we have an important assignment to execute, as we are going, it will, the vehicle will just do put, 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 and stop. Ah! And then, Daddy, I don't know what is wrong with this car. It will quickly go to the front and open it and, it, and be, it will do whatever we do. It will come back and say, this vehicle is not moving. I didn't know that he had removed the rotor from the car and put it in his pocket. And he said, ah, I'm very sorry. Uh, I have to go to, to go and call the mechanic. He will go and call the mechanic, come back, and uh, he will tell the mechanic. He, by the time he, will, he, he, he goes to the mechanic, he will already tell the mechanic that when you get there, fix this rotor, but claim money, we share the money together. That was what he was doing. Hello, what are you doing where you are? Then he came to me one day, very early in the money, he was sweating. He said, what? I said, what is wrong with you? He said, ah, daddy, 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 hey, pray for me, pray for me. I said, what happened to you? He said, overnight, I saw that Jesus came. There was great life in heaven. You are mommy immediately. You caught up with him. I said, ah, I will follow a guy. And I also decided to, to, to fly with you. But in the media, I just dropped down. I dropped down and I started crying. I said, that is how you will perpetually drop down. Unless you change your way, there is no heaven for you. You know your wickedness. 
I didn't discover until one day he didn't come to work. And we went to invite this mechanic. And when the mechanic, one of the mechanics came, I said, so uh, this man is driving you. Ah, he's a wicked man. No? This is what he has been doing. That was the end of his work with me. Beloved, what are you doing where you are? Are you a blessing to your generation or a curse? Do you ever remember that Jesus is coming back again one day? Then if we remember we know he's coming back, what shall we do? Number one, if you have been coming to church and you have never been born again, you have no story to tell. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ deliberately. Confessing him as the Lord of your life. Number two, forsake your sins today. I don't know the sin that is in your hand, but you know. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Don't you know yourself as Christ is in you? Unless you are one of the reprobates. Examine yourself and forsake your sins. Hence, for walk in the spirit. According to Galatians chapter 5, from verse 16. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh. Number three, fortify yourself daily with the word of God. Let the word of God cast out the word of Satan who, that is suggesting to you to commit sin, to walk contrary to the will of God daily. Let the word of God dwell in your life richly. It's the sword of the spirit with which we quench the fiery darts of the evil one. Because of my time as I close, be watchful and pray. Be watchful and pray. We don't know the time. The tempter is always around. Peter says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is roaring like a lion, moving about, seeking somebody to deform. Whom you have to resist by steadfast faith. Not only steadfast faith, by neleology. You need them, you cry to God. Cry to God daily that as I'm going out today, don't let me wreck my eternity with you. Luke 21, 34 to 36 says, but take it to yourself. Let your heart be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that they come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch, therefore. Methodist people, watch. The prelate is telling you, watch. If you have never remembered any message that the prelate sent to you in his leadership of you, remember this. This is what he has sent me by the Holy Spirit to proclaim to you people. Watch, therefore. And pray all ways. That is, pray in all the ways you can pray. That you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Will you bow your heads and let us go? Eternal and everlasting Father. Your word has gone forth. I pray it will not be just like the barking of the dog. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As many are taking decision now. If you are not 
accepted Jesus deliberately, call him to your life now. Tell him to take over. As many as are inviting you to their lives now, everlasting Father, in your mercy, receive them. As many are turned away from their sins to turn to you, baptize them with your Holy Spirit. Oh, all of us together, we have no power to match the deceit of the devil. I pray you will uphold us. Strengthen us daily so that when you shall come again, we might be able to inherit the kingdom with you. Thank you for answer prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Happy anniversary. <laughs>